Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday the 13th of November. Three Indian cities among world's 10 most polluted after Diwali. Concerns grow over survival of Afghan refugees returning from Pakistan. And Sri Lanka's 2024 budget sets ambitious revenue deficit targets. And now for all the details. Two Indian cities joined New Delhi to be among the world's worst attend for pollution on Monday morning with smoke heavy in the air a day after Diwali, the annual Hindu festival of lights. Indian capital with AQI figure of 420 was joined by Kolkata and Mumbai with AQI 196 and 163, according to Swiss group IQ Air. While firecrackers were banned in New Delhi, many flouted rules, shooting up the level of pollutants in the air. As part of measures to control pollution, the Delhi government had earlier this week shut schools until 18th of November and is now mulling the imposition of odd-even rule for vehicles in the region. As the government said that firecrackers are not to do firecrackers are दिल्ली में जहां मैं रहता हूं वहां भी मेरे को बहुत देखने को मिला ये तो मैं परेशान होकर रात को सो नहीं पाया फिर सुबह साइकिलिंग करने निकल गया and amid frayed diplomatic relations between New Delhi and Ottawa, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has said Canada does not want to fight with India but wants to work constructively and positively with the South Asian nation. The ties between the two countries have turned sour after Trudeau linked Indian agents to the killing of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar. Trudeau, responding to a media query on the matter, said that Canada had asked for cooperation with India on the matter as it has serious reasons to believe the Indian government could have been involved in Niger's killing. He further said, We were disappointed when New Delhi arbitrarily revoked the diplomatic immunity of over 40 Canadian diplomats in India. The ties, which have strained by mutual recriminations, are unlikely to change in the next few months. And with winter setting in, the International Rescue Committee in Afghanistan has expressed deep concern about the survival of Afghan refugees arriving from Pakistan. The international NGO, which is providing healthcare, psychosocial support and hygiene services to thousands of Afghan returnees arriving at camps, has said that the country, which itself is under severe economic crisis, cannot afford to absorb thousands of families which have been kicked out by Pakistan. Highlighting extreme difficult situation in the upcoming winter season, Season, an official said with no support network and financial aid, conditions are going to deteriorate rapidly. The humanitarian needs at the Tolkien Crossing are immense. We've seen up to 200,000 people arriving since the start of October, and many people are arriving from Pakistan with nothing but the clothes on their back. Many people have not lived here in Afghanistan for decades, and so are arriving with no support network, they have no money, and they're forced to sleep at the Tolkien Crossing in tents or just under the open skies. Well, Pakistan is home to over 4 million Afghan migrants and refugees and Afghans make up the largest portion of migrants. Pakistan government has brushed off calls from the UN and Western embassies to reconsider the expulsion plan, saying Afghans have been involved in terror attacks and in crimes that undermine security. And in a symbolic protest over hike in electricity prices and other unfair taxes being imposed on them, locals in POK threw their power bills in water bodies. A report. Hundreds of people in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir recently threw their power bills in a river in a symbolic protest against frequent hike in electricity prices despite facing load shedding daily for hours. There has been growing unrest over record high inflation and unfair taxes being imposed but the Pakistan government has continued to ignore the people's plight. The region produced around 4,000 megawatts of electricity, but they're not given any benefits. This is the potential of potential energy. But here, people have to 
जो है ना जी वो ज़्यादा हो रही है और ज़्यादा चार्जेस भी उनसे लिए जा रहे हैं बुनियादी तौर पे कम से कम हम चार हज़ार मेगावाट बिजली यहाँ से पैदा करते हैं और चार सौ मेगावाट पूरी रियासत के लोगों की ज़रूरत है चौबीस घंटे तक वो नए जाए Locals accuse Pakistan government only gives assurances but there has been zero development while Islamabad continues to exploit the natural resources of the occupied region. Moving on Sri Lanka's government on Monday announced a smaller than expected expansion in its budget for 2024 while projecting a significant jump in revenues crucial to keep its IMF bailout program afloat the government has set a budget deficit target of 8.73 billion dollars or 9.1% of gdp the total tax revenue is also projected at 4.1 trillion rupees with the biggest jump coming from the goods and services tax receipts President Ranil Wickremesinghe told the parliament this is a budget to build the foundation of Sri Lanka's recovery. We cannot continue as people who depend on others. Sri Lanka's economy contracted 7.8% in 2022, forcing it to default on its foreign debt. It must meet strict targets set by the IMF to help drive a slow recovery in an economy set to contract 2% this year. The central bank expects growth of 3.3% in 2024 when the country will hold presidential elections. And a special event was organized at the Police Canine Training Center in Nepal's capital Kathmandu to honor dogs on the occasion of Kukur Tihar festival on Sunday. Take a look. Police officials in Nepal's capital of Kathmandu awarded medals and treats to dogs on Sunday as part of Kukur Tihar celebrations, the second day of the 5-day Tihar festival during which animals are worshipped across the Himalayan nation. At the Central Dog Training School, dogs were felicitated for their contribution to maintaining security and helping officials solve cases. The event included competitions and obedience displays. The dogs were also offered special feast and worshipped with vermilion powder and flowers. Uh, I believe that dogs are the most friendliest and the loyal animals on the planet. And today is Kukur Tihar, and it is a festival that we celebrate in Nepal to respect dogs for their loyalty and friendship, and helping all the human beings all around the world. And I believe that every country should learn from Nepal to respect dog and treat them with kindness people across the hindu majority nation also honor their dogs with baths garlands and special treats to mark kukur tihar devout hindus consider the dog to be the messenger of yamraj the god of death and believe that worshiping the animal makes him happy And hundreds of Hindu devotees thronged the banks of the sacred river Ganga in the holy town of Haridwar to take holy dip to mark Somvati Amavasya, the new moon day that falls on Monday, considered very auspicious among the Hindus. On the occasion, devotees also observe special fast, make offerings, and perform rituals for the salvation of their departed ancestors. According to the Hindu epic of Mahabharat. Bhishma, the son of River Ganga, narrated the significance of Somvati Amavasya. To Yudhishthir, the eldest of the five Pandav brothers, Bhishma said that whoever takes a bath in the sacred rivers on this day would be prosperous, disease-free, and free from grief and sorrow. स्नान के पश्चात अश्वत अर्थात पीपल के वृक्ष की एक स्वाट प्रदक्षिणा करके जो धागा बांध देते हैं वो अपने आप को मोक्ष प्राप्त कर लेते हैं और स्नान का इतना अधिक महत्व बताया गया है कि स्नान के पश्चात मौन रहकर स्नान और स्नान के पश्चात अपने कुल पुरोहित या ब्राह्मण को दान करें तो जितने दान की वस्तुएं आप करेंगे उतने वर्ष उतने सहस्त्र वर्षों तक उतने कल्प तक आप स्वर्ग में वास करते हैं ऐसा पुण्य फल इसका बताया गया है well, Breaking news and views from India.